Hey guys, welcome to Jewish, Asian, and Island Pacific Wrestlers You Should Know, sponsored by Premier Pro Wrestling, Bad Company. Bad Company was about the only happening thing in the AWA at the absolute end, and Bad Company was a young man by the name of Paul Diamond and a young Asian-American, Patrick Tanaka. Pat Tanaka was a second-generation wrestler. Pat Tanaka, I will always swing from his nuts. He taught me so much without even trying. As a young guy, when I broke in, I was doing extra work or jobs on AWA TV. Long story short, I found out after a very short time that I was better than most of the guys that I was putting over on said TV. And again, I said most, um, but also those guys I worked, I was putting myself in harm's way. So being the type of person that Pat Tanaka was, and I'm talking about being selfless and a great example of how to conduct yourself. Patrick came up to me once after a taping when we decided to stay overnight and not drive back from Minneapolis after the taping and went out for a bite to eat slash bar after. And he came up to me and put me over after a handful of matches that I'd had up there. And, uh, you know, that meant the world to a young talent. So at the time, I was kind of like, oh, 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 with humility. But on the other hand, I said, well, take a shot. And I said, Patrick, I appreciate that. Where can I go that's left in this country to learn the industry? Because I want to be a wrestler. I want to wrestle full time. And this is how I want to feed myself. So he turned and he sat down and he talked about Don Owens and the grappler Lenny Denton out in Oregon and said that would be the place to go after you learn the craft because they pay $100 more a week and you only work four shots that are really close. But to learn this industry, bear with me, you've got to be in touch with Jerry Jarrett and the USWA in Memphis. That's where he then proclaimed that he learned the industry. And the rest is history. Pat really helped me learn how to politic. Man, I didn't even know what hit me. It took me six months afterwards to figure out how Patrick got me hired there as being so small in statue. The other things I want you to notice about Patrick Tanaka is at one point, the Orient Express, which started out as Sato and Tanaka managed by Fuji, were the smallest guys on the WWE roster. Then they later paired Kato or Kato, which was Paul Diamond and Patrick Tanaka again. But the point I'm trying to make is Patrick was a legit 181 pounds at the time, and he was excelling in the company. Patrick is beyond talented. He has amazing things that he does in the ring that only he can do. But the difference between him and today's moron, Patrick knew when to do it and get the most out of it. Patrick is like myself. We have compulsive personalities. When you have a compulsive personality, you've got the angel on one shoulder and the devil on the other shoulder that a normal person has in aces. That being said, it's really hard to not listen to that devil sometimes. The only problem is that devil on the shoulder does not look out for us. But anyway, you can't take anything away from Patrick's talent and wrestling knowledge and wrestling prowess. And what a fucking path he blazed. His father was a wrestler, and like I said, he's Patrick's second generation, but that didn't do Pat many favors because of his behavior. His father mandated that if he wanted to get into the wrestling industry like him, he would go to All Japan to train at the All Japan Dojo. Patrick learned really fast while he was there not only how much harder it was to train there versus the United States, but also how serious they took the business. Patrick was young, dumb, and full of cum. And one night when he was supposed to be sleeping, he uh, had left the dojo to go look for trouble, I believe, in Tokyo. When he came back, they didn't say anything, but the next day they broke Patrick's femur and kept him there for a year, cleaning up the dojo and hobbling around on that femur, and then they restarted his training again. Like I said before, 
I will always swing from Pat Tanaka's nuts because he did so much for me. And while I was in the Memphis territory, he would reach out to other people and say, tell Randy if he needs anything to hit me up. And this was while he was on the WWE roster. Now we're going to talk about a Jewish wrestler you should know, and I'm sure many of you today don't know, the late great Grand Wizard Ernie Roth. And let me tell you, my introduction to the Grand Wizard Ernie Roth was through the magazines. When I was a kid, every dime I had went into the magazines. I found all kind of scams, i.e., for example, and this is third grade, where I would get off the school bus, run through the swamp, go to the liquor store, and buy all the nickel candy. I would come back to school, and then I would sell the nickel candy for 15 cents. Then I would go back the next morning, and I would buy the new wrestling magazines. And Ernie Roth, the Grand Wizard, was in all of them, and usually on the cover, because he was always managing the main heels at World Wrestling, Worldwide Wrestling Federation for Vincent McMahon Sr., he caught your eye. And then when I started to see him on television, I was like, son of a bitch. I get it. This guy's annoying. I want to smash his friggin' face. Fast forward. Second person take me under their wing in that Memphis territory that I was telling you about earlier that Patrick got me into was handsome Jimmy the Boogie Woogie Man Valiant. And Jimmy Valiant is a plethora of knowledge. Just outside of Roanoke, he has a training facility. If you can get there to train, go do it. And if you're training there, listen to everything Handsome Jimmy tells you. Because Jimmy was probably one of the top drawing heels in the industry, but also one of the top drawing baby faces in the wrestling industry. He puts over some people, Boogie, but he really puts over over the wizard, the grand wizard, Ernie Roth, who wasn't even a wrestler. He started out managing the Sheik out of Detroit. That was cool, but I can imagine the payoffs weren't that fucking good, but I'm sure that's where he cut his teeth and learned a lot. When he went to work for the WWF and Vincent Sr., he was in charge of setting up the ring and making sure the ring was maintained and making sure the ring made it to the building. And he excelled so much and loved this industry so much that when Vince Sr. figured out that he could count on this man and how this man, Ernie Roth, saw, smelled, tasted, felt, and heard everything and retained everything and was a genius an absolute mother fucking genius when it came to managing and storytelling in that ring and when he managed somebody he ran the roads with him when he ran the roads with him just like me with the old timers just like me with handsome jimmy valiant he would smarten them up and help bring them along can you imagine that going from setting up the ring the ring guy to being one of the most recognizable characters with so much heat, it didn't matter who he was managing. They bought tickets to see the Grand Wizard get his ass kicked or whoever he was managing to get his ass kicked. The other part of this is Ernie Roth, and I think his real name was Erwin Ernest Roth, was gay. He was a homosexual and everybody knew he was a homosexual. Now, there were many predators in the wrestling industry that I'm going to say, I'm not going to call them homosexual because a predator is a predator, you know. Maybe they were a predator, homosexual. But Ernie Roth was outwardly gay in the locker room and nobody had an issue with it during the time that all this stuff about gay hate came from. I can't imagine what this man went through because there's nowhere where he really talks about it. However... The thing I just learned, which I love more than anything, is I never thought in the 30 whatever the hell years I've been in the industry, he called himself the Grand Wizard as a rip to break balls of the Ku Klux Klan, and God bless Vince Sr. for letting him do so. 
one can only imagine the heat that that gave all these white supremacists, man, how much uh, energy they burned. So angry at Ernie Roth. But anyway, hope you guys are enjoying this. Once again, Jewish, Asian, and Pacific Island wrestlers, you should know, brought to you by Premier Pro Wrestling without YouTube commercials. So have the decency to like and subscribe. And also, uh, please help support Premier Pro Wrestling. And just take a little gander at the links in the description.